What's up guys, this is Vinyl Look Puma, and today I thought I could do something a little different and do a video response. Now, a couple of days ago, an article came out on Paste Magazine's website called Where's All the Excitement for Borderlands 3, and it was written by one of their assistant editors, Holly Green. Now, before we start, I do ask that you please don't send this person any hate. Now, I'm not necessarily going to rant about anything that she wrote, but I just wanted to go ahead and say that real quick because some people can get crazy and lose their minds. So just be cool and we'll talk and I'll give you guys some of my opinions about the content of this particular article. To quickly summarize, Where's All the Excitement for Borderlands 3 is about how Holly Green is surprised that Borderlands Borderlands 3 isn't being hyped to death, and how she thinks it's weird that no one really seems to be talking about the game all that much. Now, in the article, she mentions that she posed a question to her Twitter feed about this, and she goes over a multitude of reasons as to why Borderlands 3 isn't being hyped based on some of the Twitter responses that she received. Now, the first major thing that Holly brings up is Borderlands pre-sequel and how that game was a source of disappointment for many. She goes on to talk about how she liked some of the environmental mechanics like low gravity, but felt that the environments themselves were kind of dull because they were on the moon and that a lot of the jokes in the game fell flat. And Holly concludes that the pre-sequel was one last attempt at making money off the engine and assets and didn't feel like a core game in the franchise. Holly also mentions Gearbox Software's less than stellar track record since Borderlands 2 originally released. Um, games like Battleborn got buried by Overwatch, or games like Aliens Colonial Marines launched in such a poor state that many in the gaming community aren't necessarily willing to forgive Gearbox for that. Holly also goes on to talk about Destiny and how Destiny is on everyone's mind instead of Borderlands. And to specifically quote her, she says, and I quote, what Borderlands 2 did, Destiny 2 does better. And then goes on to talk about how Destiny 2 has most of the co-op multiplayer shooter market right now, and how Gearbox doesn't seem to have the resource to compete with Destiny, let alone Activision and I guess Bungie. Otherwise, guys, I highly recommend you go ahead and read the article because I did do a pretty uh, brief summary there, and I'll link it in the video's description if you want to read it in full. But I'll go ahead and address some of the things that Holly brought up in her article. First off, I think the reason that you're not really seeing a whole lot of hype and discussion about Borderlands 3 among the gaming community at large is mostly because it's not really a known quantity at this point. While there is a lot of evidence that Borderlands 3 is being worked on, and it's also likely that the next game in the franchise will be released within the next year or so, the game hasn't technically been announced like other games in the genre. For example, a lot of people know that Bioware's Anthem is a thing and are talking about it despite there not being a whole lot of information about that game. In a way, it's sort of like The Division, where we already know that The Division was out and I guess there are people that like that game, but nobody's really talking about a Division 2 because it's not a known quantity. Maybe like Borderlands 3, people are working on The Division 2, but at this time, we don't really know anything, thus there's not really anything to truly get hyped about. Now, Gearbox has been teasing us a little bit, but until there really is a true announcement, I think the majority of the gaming community isn't going to get really excited. I guarantee you that when Borderlands 3 is announced that there are going to be a lot of people talking about it, and a lot of people that played Borderlands 2 have pretty fond memories of that game, and wouldn't mind seeing a sequel that adds some new features and has some new and interesting mechanics. Now I do understand that there's a fair amount of concern about Borderlands, especially after the pre-sequel released, and while the pre-sequel wasn't a bad game per se, the pre-sequel definitely did have its faults, as the game lacked content, bosses weren't farmable at launch, and a lot of the post-launch support was pretty anemic. After all, we didn't get a substantial update until the release of Claptastic Voyage, which fixed most of the problems with the game almost six months after its release. While the part of me is hesitant to say that the pre-sequel was a cash grab, I do agree with Holly when it comes to the fact that the pre-sequel definitely felt rushed and it deserved to have more development time to make the 
the game truly great. It was definitely short-sighted of Gearbox and 2K to not make and market the game as a standalone expansion for Borderlands 2, as that is really what the pre-sequel was. Or maybe this is just me talking, but I would have liked to have seen cross-compatibility with that game so I could play Axton on Elpis and Athena on Pandora. I think what compounded the problem with the pre-sequel, though, was the decision to release it only on 7th gen systems when the 8th gen systems were already out. This ultimately hurt the game's sales compared to something like Destiny, which ultimately released on all the platforms that were available, which subsequently helped Destiny become more popular. Plus, I also think releasing on last gen gave the pre-sequel this stigma of being a last gen game at a time where people were just starting to really buy into the Xbox One and the PS4, and thus the pre-sequel was overlooked. Something that you may be interested to know is that the sales of Dark Souls 2, not Scholar of the First Sin, but the original release that only came out on like 360, uh, PS3, and PC, actually sold worse than Dark Souls 1, and I think a big reason that that happened was because the game didn't release on all the platforms. I guarantee you, if Dark Souls 2 released on the PS4 and the Xbox One, in addition to the 360 and the PS3 and the PC, the game would have sold a whole lot better than it did. In fact, the sales of Dark Souls 3 were superior to Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 1. So, really, who knows what could happen. Maybe the Borderlands franchise is in decline because of the pre-sequel, but I'm just going to go ahead and go on a limb here and say that I doubt it. Now, I do agree with Holly that Gearbox's more recent releases have helped form a bad reputation for the developer to a certain degree. I think we can all agree that Aliens Colonial Marines and Duke Nukem Forever were a total mess. As for Battleborn, I guess there were a fair number of people that really seemed to like that game, but I think Overwatch just totally wrecked it. I'll admit that I kind of hated Battleborn, but I was expecting a game like Borderlands. Sort of like how Bloodborne was sort of like Dark Souls, and I thought there was going to be like a parallel there, but that definitely didn't happen. I guess it's possible that the sales of Borderlands 3 could be affected by the sales and reception of Battleborn, but I doubt Borderlands 3 will be affected by Aliens or Duke Nukem. Those games were released so long ago that I doubt most of the general gaming populace remembers them at this point. I guess we'll see, but I think people probably remember Borderlands 2 a lot more fondly than they remember those other games from a couple years back. What I will say is that I hope Gearbox really takes their time with Borderlands 3 to make it the best game that they can possibly make it, because they really need that after Battleborn. And then there's Destiny. Now, this will definitely show my bias, but I've got to say I kind of cringed a little bit when I read, quote, what Borderlands 2 did, Destiny 2 does better. Now, to be fair, I haven't played Destiny 2, but I did play a fair amount of the first Destiny, and while I like that game, and I do think that there are certain things that Gearbox could borrow and then incorporate into Borderlands 3, I also think that when it comes to both franchises, even at its worst, Borderlands is by far the superior franchise. And as an example, I didn't have to get on my computer to look up the Grimmer cards for Borderlands the pre-sequel to understand the story. The pre-sequel story, while nowhere near as good as Borderlands 2, was far easier to follow and wasn't needlessly obscured by what I would consider to be lazy design. I also think the popularity of Destiny 2 is being over-exaggerated. If VG Charts is to be believed, the PS4 and Xbox One version of the original Destiny sold about 9.1 million units combined, while both versions of Destiny 2 have sold roughly 4.8 million units combined, which is just over half the original units of Destiny. And given a lot of the bad press Destiny 2 experienced recently due to the lack of content, intentionally hiding players' true experience gains, microtransaction shaders, and the Eververse in general, it's safe to say that a lot of people aren't particularly looking forward to Destiny 3. Not to mention that Destiny 1, and maybe Destiny 2 because I don't know and I haven't played it, 
locks players out of content that they paid for because they don't have a group of friends to play Destiny with. And I can also think of no other game franchise that makes it so unbelievably difficult to put parties together to even do the raids, and at least with Destiny 1, to even do the nightfall strikes. Bungie should be ashamed of themselves for not including matchmaking or actually putting some kind of system like Destiny LFG in the game like they should have put the friggin' lore in the game. Sorry guys, I went into a bit of a rant there. To Holly's point though, I do agree that at least at the moment, Destiny 2 is more popular than Borderlands 2. She is right when she says that Destiny 2 does have most of the co-op multiplayer shooter market right now. However, with that said, I don't think that should be a license for 2K and Gearbox to just relentlessly copy Destiny, sort of like how 343 turned Halo into Call of Halo Sprint Warfare. I also disagree when it comes to the question of whether Gearbox has the potential and the resources to compete with Destiny. After all, Gearbox's publisher is 2K, and 2K is owned by Take-Two, which in turn owns Rockstar, who are responsible for games like Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. Take-Two has plenty of money, and I would think if Gearbox somehow needed more money, Take-Two would be willing to provide it for Borderlands 3, because Borderlands 3 is a part of a proven franchise and would be the sequel to 2K's highest selling game ever. I guess what I will say to Holly's point about competition with Destiny is that I don't think it will be much of an issue provided that Gearbox takes their time to make a great game and markets it well. From what I hear, a lot of people that bought Destiny 2 aren't really as satisfied with it, and if Gearbox capitalizes on that, I could definitely see Borderlands 3 potentially outperforming Destiny 2 in terms of sales and player retention. Maybe I could be proven wrong whenever Borderlands 3 releases and the game flops, but I don't necessarily think that's going to happen. But back to the article's title, I guess what I will say is that don't be worried about Borderlands 3 and the fact that there isn't a whole lot going on right now. Remember that Fallout 4 got announced and people went crazy. And before that, there was like rumor and conjecture that the next game was going to come out. Maybe the core fan base was pretty hyped, but the general gaming populace actually got hyped when the game was announced. I guess we'll see what happens, but... Otherwise, guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to hit that like button. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.